Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. I didn't think it was possible to make an SAS-powered InfiniGlider in the new KSP 0.21, but while testing this design for a micro shuttle, as I was coming in for a landing, uh, this started happening. So as you can see, uh, we have an uh, InfiniGlider powered entirely by SAS. I am not touching the controls. This is just the SAS freaking the fuck out. Um, by the way, this thing gets up to 28 kilometers and almost 600 meters per second on its own, so when I add a launcher to it, I'm pretty sure I can get this thing into orbit. So, I'm happy. Landing it is another story, however. Oh, SAS fixed itself. Damn, we were doing so well, too. So after a bit more testing and developing, I came up with this design, the Micro Shuttle. Appropriately named, the Micro Shuttle, because, you know it's a micro shuttle and what better name for a micro shuttle than a micro shuttle of course we had to use liquid fuel boosters on the sides instead of solid rocket boosters because there are no lock the words there are no solid rocket boosters that will fit the appropriate size requirements here and uh, this is the launch vehicle there are instructions in the file for how to fly it which I will quickly copy into a text file so that I can fly it. So now, watch as I attempt to fly this shuttle properly. This may not work at all. Oh, Jesus. Ah, ah. Oh, that's working uh, quite well, actually. Except for the fact that we're going the wrong way into orbit. Suppose I'll turn that off for now. So we can enjoy the beautiful liftoff. As you can see, this thing has a somewhat, uh, low thrust to weight ratio and a somewhat uh, unusual liftoff pattern. Uh, I assure you, it can and will get to orbit, and if I fail to launch this one into orbit correctly, I will launch another one. Or, no wait, no, that's not the right word. I already have one in orbit that I will show you if this one fails to get into orbit. So, suppose I should talk to you about what the controls are while I'm flying it, right? Because it's going to be a long flight. So basically, turn on the SAS and you launch at full throttle. You don't touch the controls. As you might have noticed, I am not touching the controls. So we are going up. Also, as you can see, it drains the fuel out of these uh, fairly quickly. It's actually, they're, they're entirely empty at this point. The thing is, if we were to ditch them now, we wouldn't have the thrust to weight ratio to keep going. So, we pretend they're still solid rocket boosters and still fueled through this clever use of fuel lines here. Fuel goes out, fuel goes back in. And so those engines are still being powered by fuel from the main tank, while they, uh, the tanks themselves empty first, making sure that when we do ditch them, we do not ditch any fuel. Of course, we have the two giant SAS wheels at the top, or inline reaction wheels. Um, those are obviously... Uh, so that this thing can balance itself because as you can imagine the thrust and weight and everything is very badly balanced because you know it's it's just yeah it is so those up there allow us to maintain this balance despite the fact that we have no right to maintain it once we reach 10 kilometers we'll pitch over to uh, 67.5 degrees, aka halfway between 90 and 45, and as you can see, we are reaching there pretty fast, such as right now. Whoa, I forgot how quick this thing reacts to uh, control input. Anyhow, we are right where we need to be, just about. Um, not 100% sure on that. And um, then when the main, main tank gets down to 30 liters of fuel, so in a moment or so, I have to stage the booster. This will also activate the secondary engines on the shuttle itself. And now we're flying an even weirder contraption. Um, when the main tank runs out of fuel, stage and hit 1 to deactivate the secondary engines, because we need to not be using those secondary engines, because they're very fuel inefficient. Um, and we pitch over to prograde. Um, of course, once that happens, not right now. Right now, we're still trying to maintain this angle that we got here. And um, then we have to get our apoapsis to 71 kilometers and circularize. 
I'm going to deactivate those main engines sh slightly before we ditch the tank. And there we go, we ditched the tank, and it kind of automatically pulled over to prograde on its own a bit. Of course, we're having to control it just a little bit to keep it from going past prograde. Now we have to uh, get our apoapsis to 71 kilometers. And I'm falling too fast for that to happen. So we need to pitch up a bit more. As you can see, we are rapidly running out of fuel, but we are also rapidly approaching orbital velocities. Oh, okay, I do need to follow the prograde vector down to some degree. I'm going to throttle down to two-thirds. This isn't part of the instructions that I put here. I'm just kind of trying to feel my way around it. And now I've kind of cut the engines entirely. And we're going to coast. And uh, we seem to be losing power. Yay. Due to probeness or something. And there's the micro shuttle already in orbit. You know, a different one, obviously. And uh, so you can see that we are indeed capable of bringing this to orbit. Let's see, how many delta Vs do we need to get into orbit? And we are now trying to use our last tiny bit of fuel to get that periapsis out of the atmosphere. Of course, I don't think that's actually going to work, but it's worth a try. Actually, we might just pull this off. I mean, we have so little fuel left, but this thing is very tiny and very fuel efficient when I'm firing it at minimum throttle, which is, of course, what I'm doing to get this thing into orbit. Uh, yes. 0.41 liters left. Obviously, I did not fly it very well if we have only 0 0.4140 now liters left. Because I said it should have 1 to 2 liters left, remember? Maybe it was 0 to 1 liters. <laughs> oh god, that's not good. Right, I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. Oh, that's a bit more than I meant to, but uh, it's okay. And now we're in space, in orbit and stuff. So, lag out a little bit, game. Lag out. Here you go. Here's, here's this shuttle thingy in orbit. Yay, it's a shuttle thingy. I don't know why it exists. Whose idea was this? It has these ugly little things on the bottom. Yeah, this is... Ah, this is a great design. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Let's go back to regular space probes, folks. Thanks for watching, etc., etc. See you in space.